Hey guys, it's Linda Winter with another Winter Designs project. Okay, this one's a little bit different because I've got a template that already exists and I've made another version of the template, Sim similar but different. So this is the full adult bib. It's a clothing protector that you wear when you're out at a restaurant, you can wear it in your car, you can wear it on the plane, you can wear it when you're at your desk in the office, anytime you wanna protect your clothing. It's also great if you know somebody in assisted living or you wanna do some charity project where you make a hundred of these and just go drop them off at one of the local places because everybody will be able to put this to use. This guy here, it's not the full length, which means that it's gonna be cheaper for me to ship this to you. It's gonna be cheaper for you to buy it and it means that it needs less fabric. So what do we put down? <laughs> a monkey has got to be a part of this. So you can see here, basically I've got the top here all of this, that's the bib, all of this down here is no longer gonna be fabric, it's gonna be a towel. I recommend a towel just because it's easing on and off and you've got lots of towels around. So let's take a look at the adult bib and I want you to look at my video that I have because I'm not gonna do all the sewing and show you the whole process, but I want you to show you to see, uh, show you the new one and how it works. Okay, so this is an adult bib. It's got all that fabric. You can do Velcro, you can do snaps, you can do buttons, you can do all kinds of things at the top, but basically it's all fabric. If you spill something here, you've got to throw this whole thing in the wash. No big deal but wouldn't it be nice to be able to swap out and I'm gonna move monkey and we're gonna pull this one out here this is the top this part right here and I've attached it with velcro you can use buttons you can use snaps you want to think about who the user is if it's somebody in assisted living a button or a snap might be difficult that velcro is easy on and off so also if you don't have a machine that does buttonholes then that's a nice option as well I've done elastic at the top here with a big button so that's easy for somebody to put on and off. When this is on and you've got that towel in front of you <clears throat> sitting down, you've got a lot of towel. We'll talk about towel options for you. But all of this right here is probably gonna be safe from food or drink or whatever. And this is the part that gets wet. If you do have something that spills, take that off. Grab another that you've already sewn the Velcro onto. And I'm gonna place this right on top. And I want you to notice that my towel is much narrower than the top. No big deal, because that's gonna be on the sides. You wouldn't have all this other stuff laying around and you'd get that lined up a little bit more symmetrically, but you get the idea. So you can use towels that you already have on hand. You can use towels that you have in your kitchen, in your bathroom. Again, we'll talk about the length because the length is gonna be something you want to address. And it's really great done with washcloths for kids. I'm gonna make a smaller one of these for kids. So you'll have that option as well. So we've got Velcro here. Let's talk about some of the different options for you and how to do this. This towel is super long. If you've got a long towel, you may want to. If you like the trim on the bottom, you can leave that. But you can determine the length, basically have that top already made and determine how long you want it to be stitch this across first instead of just cutting it because all of this is gonna unravel and then you can put that Velcro on. Again, Velcro buttons. I'm gonna show you a really cool option if you have a shirt that already has a button down, so it's kind of a cool thing too. So we'll get this towel out of the way. I wanna show you though, and again, Monkey, you're gonna go down, she's gonna jump up. Y'all have been asking for Monkey. I had lots of comments about where's Monkey been? So Monkey is making up for lost time. Velcro, you can go up and down this way, or you can go this way. I talk about that in the videos. You can do the buttons if you want to. You can see Velcro going this way, Velcro going this way. Lots of options for you. So. Blue jeans are great. If you're gonna make one and it's for somebody that is spilling a lot, that's going to be making a mess and it may be somebody younger or maybe somebody with a physical disability, then you wanna think about the towel's great, but if you want to do material in between, F, uh, P-U-L, P-U-L is polyurethane laminate. And let me pull some of that over here. PUL poly polyurethane laminate, that's what this is. Wipeable, washable, breathable. I talked about, about it in the previous video. You can put this on the back side of your towel if you want to, just stitch it along, you know, fold that over. You can even do right sides together. Or you could, instead of the towel, just have a piece of fabric with this on the back side, or you can have two pieces of fabric with batting in between. 
and have that just be another piece that goes on and off. What I like about the towel is they're already in your house. You've already bought them, you've already paid for them. Okay, so let's get this template out of the way and we're gonna pull over this template. Now I've had lots of people say, hey, I could probably do a paper template and make my own. Yeah, you're right, you could, absolutely. If you're gonna make one, great idea, go for it. But if you're gonna make a bunch of these and you're gonna give them as gifts or you wanna have them for Thanksgiving or whenever everybody's coming together, this paper template, every time you go to cut, it moves. When you trace around it, you've gotta cut with scissors. It's gonna take time. You're gonna cut into the template. The template rips, it slips. All those things cause this for me to have to make another one. And then where did I put it? And I've got to cut out another one, print it out, trace it out, cut it out, all of that stuff. Instead, the templates have our no slip backing. You can see my table is rocking because I'm pushing hard. No slipping, no kidding. I've cut two pieces out already here. One, this guy here on the fold. This is cut with the template. And you notice right here, I don't know if you can see how that's pieced there. I used FS101. This guy here, this is a Pellon material that I love. It's an interfacing. And I pieced them together because I didn't have a big enough piece here. You can see how I pieced that together. That's just fine. On one of the layers of cotton fabric, this is the top part. That's what I recommend that you do. Put an FS101. It's a lightweight fusible interfacing on one of those. It just holds it a little bit more stable and just makes it give a little bit more oomph to it. I don't need batting inside of here. I don't need the um, PUL, that laminated material, any of that stuff inside because it's going to get bulky and it's going to get cumbersome and it'll slide around. So you have a couple options when you cut. You can cut one of them out with the template. I'll do that in just a minute. And then cut another piece randomly, you know, just kind of rough cut around, pin, pin, pin all the way around and then stitch all the way around. We'll talk about stitching and I'll do some stitching in just a minute for you. You can do that or you can cut two of them and line them up. So I want to show you how to cut. Personally, this to me is a get or done kind of method. You're cutting these you're, and you're pressing these with the fusible there and then you're ready to go with your backing fabric. And choose fabrics that will fit the variety of towels that you have in stock. Maybe you're going to do all blues and whites, that kind of thing. All right, so we want to fold in half, and because I've got this one here that is already cut, I'm going to fold this in half, and you can see how the template, here's the fold. So I'm going to turn this over. See this right here? I want to make sure that I have enough fabric, so I'm going to have that lined up pretty evenly, but not exactly. That doesn't matter so much. And when I place this on top, I want to look for two places. I'm going to look along the fold here, and you can see how I don't have that lined up quite right. So I want to get that on the edge. And then right here, that tip, I need to have enough fabric. This part right here is going to be bumpy because it's kind of puckered. There's no template holding that down. So when we get to cut here, we're going to come back and take a look at that again. I'm going to scoot this close. Now, I like using a rotary cutter that has... A, an ability to do my curve. So Martelli's rotary cutter, this is a 45 millimeter. Here's a 28. I'm gonna do the 45 millimeter, but then I wanna show you how the 28 works so well too. When I go to cut, you're cutting from the shoulder because that allows me to cut and keep this in place. So I'm gonna cut and square that off. I'm gonna turn the template. That's part of that no slip material on the back. And I'm gonna cut off. What that means is I just cut and move the template towards me to get it repositioned. And I cut off. And as I continue to cut, I'm gonna move that template. Now I said here, this is where I wanna make sure that this hasn't moved any. And the other thing too, is I just wanna give this a little bit of a tug because I don't want to create puckers here. If you had a big bump inside of there, this would not lay flat when it's sitting on your chest. So I'm gonna hold down here and cut. Now cutting inside the curves, you can cut this way here or you can come from this side and cut this way here. I'm a lefty, so I know what I'm doing is a little bit different than what you're used to. If you're not comfortable with this, in the video I talk about using a pen, a markable pen, and tracing inside of there, you can do that. And you can see I've cut a little bit there. When you're cutting with the 45 millimeter, it is harder to get inside of there. So I'm gonna use a 28. You don't need to. All of the ones that I've made, I've done with the 45 millimeter, just because it's the one that I keep out right next to me. But you can see when I move this, that allows me to get right inside of there. Don't worry if it takes you a couple times, and don't worry if you don't cut all of that, because if you've traced it, you can go right inside of there 
and get all that excess off. That is gonna be part of your seam allowance anyway, so it's no big deal. You've got a big enough piece of fabric here that that can be a scrap that you hang on to for another project. Or I had a friend of mine that made a couple aprons for me and she used these as pockets, which I thought was really cool. All right, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna take this guy and we're gonna open that up and we're gonna place this guy right sides together. Now in the video, you'll see me sewing this around. I'm not gonna do that here. I'm gonna pull out my next sample and I wanna show you what to do. We're gonna pin, 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 or clip, clip, clip inside of here, stitch inside of here, stitch around, stitch around. You've got a couple options. If you're gonna use the towel with the Velcro, then we're gonna stitch here and here and leave ourselves an opening big enough to get my hand inside. I wanna be able to get my hand inside so when I go to turn and be able to pull these corners out, I can get my hand in there and pull those points there out and be able to turn that carefully. I said, if you're gonna use a towel that has the Velcro, if you're gonna use a towel that's in there or you're gonna attach a piece of fabric that isn't removable, that just gives you, it's another fabric option for you too, you can inside of here, put a towel right inside in between these, don't stitch any of this up and then stitch the towel so that it's gonna drape nicely. And then when you go to sew these, you're gonna to have to kind of roll it up and tuck it inside of here, but it's another option for you as well. I like having the Velcro on the back side of this. And here's my key. <laughs> I like having the Velcro on the back side of this just because I think it's no big deal for it to show. But if you wanted the Velcro inside here and tuck the towel inside, that way it's reversible and you don't see any Velcro, you're welcome to do that. To me, it's just more work and it's still gonna be inside of there. So to me, add this on. So we'll talk about putting the Velcro on in just a minute. All right, so what we wanna do is pull over this sample where I've already done the sewing. We'll talk about this guy in just a second. And I've also pinked. Now, I wanna go through some of the materials that you have and that you'll need. Pinking shears, I love these. The pink is so small. My good pinking shears no longer cut, so I've gotta get them sharpened. So I use these guys. They don't really do as much as I'd like. So sharp scissors to snip, snip, snip on those curved areas. If you look at this piece, you can see I stopped sewing here and I stopped sewing here. I've already trimmed around. Let's talk about this guy here though, because material-wise, I've got this. You guys remember these, those mask keepers? That would be perfect for this. You can also use the hair elastics. I have these with my coffee cozies. You can put that. This, because I have so many of these, we're basically gonna snip. Monkey, you're really making it tough today. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna snip these guys here or the other one there. <laughs> Mike, down you go. All right, so we're gonna place this right inside of here and let's take a look. And I do this in the video, so the original video that I have. So this inside here, so basically we're going to be holding this. You can tie a knot in here if you like, but we're gonna place this here and you wanna give yourself some sticking out, we're gonna place this here. You'll place a pin here and a pin here. That way it's gonna hold. What I like to do is stitch to about here, maybe even a little bit further, and then I pull this back. I place this here, my needle of my sewing machine goes down, and then I put a pin here. So it's really up to you. If you don't mind waiting till you get to the top, you may forget, if you do, you'll go unsew that area, but place that right inside of here. If you want to use one of these elastics, and again, these mask keeper little things work really well too. <laughs> I hope all of you love cats because <laughs> we have our cats here that always wanna be a part of things. But do you see how this would be adjustable? What's really cool about this too, is you could tie a knot in between here so that you would have several different places. You could have a button here, you could have a button here. So if you needed more length. Typically, the amount that I have there works really well for most every neck, so it's up to you. But these, you may have these in stock already, so you could put those to use. You could also do the, belt, uh, the buttons or the Velcro. So a button with the buttonhole if you wanted to do that, it's up to you. All right, so we're gonna move this aside. We're gonna go back to this one here. And I wanna show you how we're gonna turn this right sides out. So I mentioned the idea 
of having this a little bit wider than where my hand can fit in. All right, before we turn though, we're gonna snip this off. All right, so we're gonna go inside the opening. We're gonna reach in, and when I reach in, I'm gonna go for this corner. I'm gonna talk about one other option too, because this, when you close this later on, you've gotta do the folding back, and you can see here how that's not laying nice and flat. And when you fold that back, right sides together now, but later when we turn it, it'll be wrong sides together. We have to line this up and line this up to make them pretty. What you can do is stitch to here, stop stitching, stitch to here. When you're all finished sewing around, come back to here, increase your stitch length as long as possible, and then stitch to here. Don't back stitch because what we're gonna be doing in just a minute is ripping that stitch out. So you've stitched, regular stitch, a 2.5, a 2.8, whatever it is, all the way around, but this is the longest stitch possible. When that is sewn, you're gonna to go to your iron and you'll press where that seam is. Basically, we're gonna be doing, I've already pinched this, monkey, really? Today, you are <laughs> wanting to be the star. So imagine that right here, I had pressed this. I've trimmed a little bit off, but we would press with the iron. You can also press with one of Philip's stilettos. We've got some new stilettos. We'll talk about those in just a minute. But do you see how I'm basically pressing on one side here? So that area here, you would turn that over and you would do the same thing on the other side. What that allows me to do is create that crease that's already there for me. So when I go to close it shut, I've got that crease built in. When you've given both sides creases, then we come back and we crease one more time. And again, you'd have a little bit more fabric. I've trimmed mine off a little bit just to be able to you know, get to the next step. But you get the idea. If we did that here, then you come back and you pick out those stitches, rip them out, and then we're gonna turn inside out. Okay, so my hand goes inside. I wanna reach in and I'm gonna grab that corner. All right, my thumb is going on the other side too. <laughs> and I'm gonna push right inside of here to where I can feel it. And when I get to where I can feel it, I'm gonna pull through, okay. I've got that elastic on this side so I can pull. We're gonna grab one of Stil Philip Stilettos and this is one of his new decorative and this is an unfinished one. We have gloss and we have unfinished. We're gonna have the original stilettos on the website and then we're gonna have the decorative stilettos on the website and you'll choose now from gloss and no gloss. But can you see how when I've already turned that out a little bit with my hand, <laughs> Sorry guys, we have no way to lock up our kitties either. The kitties have free reign and I'm using my belly to go in and just kind of push. And do you see how I'm using the point there and I'm pushing not so hard that I'm worried about poking through. That's what's nice about the stiletto is it doesn't poke through. All right, so that gives me a pretty good, <laughs> a pretty good way to get that corner there. All right, so we've done that one side. We're gonna reach in on the other side. And again, with my hand going inside, and if you've got big hands, no big deal. You can gather up like I'm doing here. And I'm basically going to get to where my thumb is gonna come over on this other side. I'm gonna pull here. And my thumb is gonna come in here. And when I'm pushing through, my thumb is gonna be pushing in that corner. I like my thumb to get started, and then I'm gonna use this stiletto. All right, Philip's trying to get monkey out of the way too, so. All right, so the stiletto, do you see how I'm pushing there? And I'm pushing there. All right, so we're gonna use it to push, but I'm also gonna take this flat edge here, and we're gonna go inside here, and we're gonna go along here. I've got my iron over here, it's not turned on, but what I want you to see is I'm just getting that flat edge and I'm just really getting right there to where it's right there at the edge. If you get an unglossed stiletto, I can take my iron and literally do this and do this to get that to really lock into place. Same thing over here. I'm gonna turn this stiletto in the opposite end 
in the opposite direction, I should say, and I can take that iron on an unglossed. Why unglossed? Because the unglossed will not stick to your fabric. If you use a gloss stiletto, it's gonna stick. When you go to pull this out, it's gonna grab. And I can continue to use this tool, and I'm holding here, and with my hand, I'm just going along, and I'm really giving a good kind of a crease press with this stiletto. Now this corner down here, we've already got that corner that we've trimmed a little bit, but we haven't done anything here. So we're gonna go inside here and do the same thing. I'm gonna use the flat edge right now in that corner. You can start with the pointed corner if you feel like you need to, and I probably would because the flat edge is really good for opening up those seams, but the pointed end is really good for poking out. So you get the idea. We're gonna press all of this. We're gonna get it all turned right sides out. And can you see which one of our animals this one is for? It's not for our kitty lovers, it's for the dog lovers. So we've got doggies here. So imagine, I'm gonna take my time and press all of this well, press all of that well. And this guy here, now, because we've done, imagine, imagine that we had sewn this down, this would have been nice and finished. And we can press that down. When you've done that, we're gonna take our piece of Velcro and is this the back or is this the front? Think about all your towels that you have as your options and we're gonna attach our, um, I mean our, our uh, Velcro here. Velcro or hook and loop, there are two sides to it. And the side that I want you to have on, whether it's this side or this side, is the rough stuff. That rough stuff, why? because this isn't gonna be washed as much as the towel. If you put this on the towel, this rough stuff, it's gonna grab everything in the towel. We don't really wanna do that. Imagine this is pressed and imagine that this matches and we're gonna place it this way up. Now, when we do this, this guy here, we're going to pin from the other side all the way where we want it. How long do I want this to be along that edge? to right about here. You can trim now if you want to, but you don't have to. You can sew because it will move on you a little bit. I think I have another sample. I'm gonna reach through my pile and let's grab this one. And you can see how this one matches the Velcro a little bit better. Coffee, for all of your coffee lovers, it's fun to choose fabrics that fit kind of the theme. And again, if this is the back side, then I'm gonna have this where I'm pinning, pinning, pinning on this side. Why do I wanna pin on this side? Because when I go to sew this down, I want the stitches here to be pretty. If I'm stitching on this side and this is the front, my bobbin stitches don't always show up as pretty. And the bobbin stitches are gonna be in the Velcro, so that's not as big a deal. Let me show you on here what I mean. We're gonna stitch down across and then up and then over. And when you stitch like that on the back side, you can see I stitched in the middle and see how those stitches are a little wobbly. My machine needs to get tuned up. You guys know that if you've watched my videos before, but even so your stitches might not be so pretty there. So stitch from the front side. And that's what we'll have when we do this one. And again, choose whether you wanna have a button here or whatever. So we've got now a top, we've got a top, We've got a top that's almost finished. You can grab your towels. Do you see how this is the oddball? If I made these two here and a couple others that had greens, browns, those kinds of things, I could swap out my towels and have lots of towels that go with this. This with 10 towels would make a really great gift for somebody that's in assisted living so that they're able to swap them out and whoever's doing the laundry on a regular basis, they'll be able to swap those out easily and still have it matching. Coffee towels, you can see how, here how I have that coffee towel and it's upside down, but you get the idea. That matches, that matches. This matches, this matches. So pick fabrics that match and pick the towels. I like to have the towel kind of be the lead. Saying that though, I grabbed a shirt and this shirt here I bought for $3.00 it had embroidery. It was a brand new shirt, it was on sale. And you always pick the largest shirt that you can find because it gives you real estate. The back side here, this yoke bottom, the back of the shirt, that's what I made this out of. Now, Linda Klein, she's a customer who does a lot of sewing and selling.
she wrote a really nice note about the adult bib. I'll read it in just a minute. But her idea made me think, oh, what's something else to do with this? I bought this shirt because I wanted to do something with the embroidery, so I'll tell you in a minute what she did. But with a shirt like this, with all the real estate, you can see I've still got lots of shirt left to make another. I've got a sleeve here if I wanted to do that. Oh, the buttonholes. Let me show you the buttonholes and the buttons. So I've done Velcro on these, but do you see here if I did buttons here, but no, do buttonholes. If I do buttonholes here, then it's easy to sew buttons on the towel. So instead of the Velcro, you can do buttonholes. You can do buttonholes of your own if you wanted to instead of the Velcro, but you've got to have a sewing machine that does buttonholes and you've got to know and feel comfortable doing buttonholes. So if you did this where you're cutting out this top or you're even cutting this off and stitching this here, you already have your buttonhole placement to put on your towels. So to me, that's a really great option for you as well. Okay, so I wanna read you Linda Klein's statement. I have a contest every now, every month now, I've got a contest that we just started on my website. If you go to my website, winterdesigns.com, I'll show you this here, winterdesigns.com. If you go enter my, um, my monthly contest each month i'm giving away a hundred dollar gift card so linda entered this for our october gift card this is the adult bib she used the regular size adult bib and i love what she's done notice this this is a little zipper bag that she created let me read you what she said about this i just thought it was so cool she said i love using the adult bib template to cut multiple fabrics at once not even adult bibs because the template is so big i think i threw it down on the ground uh, because it's so big i never have a problem with any of the fabric slipping out of place so it's great for squaring off projects too she also said that she started using cam snaps to close I'm doing a lot of projects with Snap, so I'm going to have this package on my website as well. There are a couple extra clips that come with it and a couple extra snaps with it because snaps are so easy to do, but not everybody has all the snap colors that they want and the tools. So that's a nice option. Cam is a brand. Cam snaps, they're expensive. I love these smaller versions, but you have to think, am I going to really snap through on a towel, maybe, maybe not. So you have to de decide on the towel itself. Anyway, she says using complementary fabrics makes the bib reversible. So if you're doing the adult bib, like I had before, the adult pibs that are down on the floor, blue jean on the front, a men's button down shirt that's flannel on the back, so it's reversible, but you see the button down on the front, so it looks kind of cool maybe even incorporate the pocket. She's done beautiful floral fabrics, which is really nice too for women especially. And she said, since many of my buyers are women, I make matching zippered totes to easily tuck in their purse. If the bib gets soiled, it can be folded and put back in the tote. So back to my shirt, that embroidery that's there, is this the piece that has the embroidery? Nope, this one does. So back to usual, right guys? I'm always looking for whatever it was that I needed on the floor. So you take this embroidery and you're gonna make some kind of a bag that has that. So you can place this inside of there. Now maybe it's a towel, maybe it's the regular bib that's just all fabric. So it's really up to you. But I love that idea. So if you have ideas like that, if you have projects that you've done, with my templates, be sure that you take pictures and you upload them. You'll see it monthly contest on my website. So I wanna quickly talk about towels because there are lots of towel options. If you're doing for somebody that is going out to lunch, that's in the office or whatever, these towels, they're thin. So the reality is they're not gonna hold a whole lot, but they're gonna protect your clothing enough. They also have a little decorative element. If this is somebody in assisted living, this is not a good choice. But if this is a ladies lunch thing, this might be a great choice to have these for everybody, especially if they're all matching. So you can add the pom-pom there if you want. Look how long this is. It's way down here. So if you're gonna make this, you might want to decide how long you want it to be and then crop that off and that becomes what's attached here. So it's up to you. I love towels like this, but they're not gonna be the heavy duty towels that you need for really serious, you know, like I'm spilling and making a mess with my soup. 
Also small towels. Small towels like this, great for kids, but it's not gonna be great for an adult. A towel like this, as cute as it is, it's got a great theme to it, but again, it's not as heavy, so this might be a really nice one. Heavy duty towels, are these too much for somebody to have where it really feels like, man, I've got a towel on my lap. And also look at the length difference here too. So you can see there's a huge difference in length. I'm fine if this doesn't fit the width of the top because we basically just want it to cover this area here. If you've got a towel that's too wide, I've got towels here, these are wider, you're gonna take a gathering stitch, a gathering stitch here so that this gathers up a little bit. Can you see this towel is thin? And I have this towel, they came as a set. You sew these right sides together. Make sure when they don't line up that you figure out where you want it to be. And you turn them right sides out. Now you've got two towels that are gonna be perfect to cover up and catch all of those drips. If you need it to be heavier than this, that's where you put something in between. PUL, batting, whatever it is. Just don't make it too heavy where it's too much. There are lighter weight towels. Again, this one would need to be backed with something else. The dog one that I had, the dog bandana, how cute would that be hanging from that dog bandana? Here's the official cookie tester. If you've got a dog that loves your treats, this would be a great towel for that. So you get the idea. This is not going to teach you everything you need to know about making the adult bib. So go watch the adult bib. But I wanted you to see the new template that's available. It's for a towel, but you can use fabrics as well. So you can find this and my adult bib on my Winter Designs website. If you have any questions, my phone number is on the website there too. So take a look and give me a call. And thanks so much for watching and have a great time with this. Let me know what you think of it.